We might not have been the first one to jump on this whole idea of school officials refusing to uh, discipline or suspend or expel black students who are guilty of some pretty high level violent and disruptive behavior. We might not have been the first, but we weren't too far behind the first. But I tell you something, nobody's done more on it than we have. Nobody's talked about it louder than we have. Nobody's banged the drum more than we have about the what will happen when you stop enforcing, uh, when, you let the, when you let the most dangerous people stay in school because instead of being predators, we have described these people as victims of white racism and that's why they have to stay in school. How many, how many, we've done over a hundred stories on that. Now we get a story that, and the basis of the story, right, was the Obama era, a rule that said, listen, there's an enormous difference between black kids and white kids and, and discipline and in performance, and there's only one reason, one reason only for that reason, for that difference, that disparity, that is white racism. Good Lord, that has done so much damage. Might have done more damage than anything else Obama did, and that's a pretty long list, isn't it, with a lot of competition. Now comes Paul Sperry from the New York Post, who's one of my favorite writers. He did a fantastic story last year. We'll talk about it another time. He wrote a great book about the, the great bank holdup. And uh, anyway, why don't we read Paul Sperry's article for some good news out of the Trump administration. Headline, Trump scrapping Obama era rule that turned schools into war zones. The Trump administration plans this summer to scrap a controversial Obama-era discipline rule forced on schools to close racial gaps in suspension and arrests, but that critics say pressures educators to turn a blind eye to escalating bad behavior. Bingo! The federal directive, issued jointly in 2014 by the Department of Education and Justice, that's what gave it a little bit of zing, right? This wasn't just the Department of Education saying this. They brought in all the lawyers from the Department of Justice. That's kind of a unique situation. Anyway, uh, they, 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 this federal directive warned public school districts receiving federal funding, everybody, that they could face investigation and funding cuts if they failed to reduce st statistical disparities in discipline by race. On average, the administration noted black students are suspended at three times the rate of their white peers. Pick a number from three to ten. That's what the real number is. The, the directive also discourages student arrests and holds districts liable for the actions of school resource officers or other law enforcement personnel. The one-size-fits-all federal policy, which recommends group counseling sessions and other alternatives to traditional discipline, like suspension and expulsion, has been foisted on several hundred school districts serving millions of students through investigation and threats of investigation that have continued into the Trump administration. The scope of it is breathtaking, said Max Eden, a guy at the Manhattan Institute. He said surveys show schools serving predominantly minority students have been hit the hardest by the resulting breakdown in discipline with violence and chaos, mushrooming out of control in urban districts. Hmm. It's funny. When we're talking about what the school, you know, when we're talking about what the white racism is inflicting on black students, it's all very clear. It's like white racism, black students are victims. But when we talk, when we start describing the schools, then we have to start going the euphemism route. We don't do euphemisms around here. And in New York, Mayor de Blasio uh, recommended uh, all these different things to prevent sus suspension, including restorative justice, counseling, but more schools saw more fighting, disrespect, drugs, gang activity, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Here's the money graph. While New York City school suspensions are down, crime has spiked in city's public schools. How many times have we said that? Talking about the funny numbers. Arrest down, crime up. Welcome to the brave new funny world of crime numbers in and out of schools.
Current academic year has seen the first school murder in more than 20 years, a stabbing at a Bronx high school, the first time a gun was fired inside a school in more than 15 years, blah, 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 more rapes, other sex crimes than any other year since 2007. Simil uh, studies show similar, similar uh, results in 50 other urban school districts across the country, flare-ups in violent behavior since softening their discipline codes. Large, here's another money graph, large shares of teachers now say they feel unsafe as more and more students physically attack faculty and staff according to the school climate and teacher surveys from dozens of districts including Buffalo, Syracuse, Philly, and Denver. Yeah, we've done stories in each one of those places a couple of times. A couple of times, plus a couple dozen more. Goes on and on, parents saying, our schools are dangerous. Surprise! And we got other people saying, oh, we can't, we can't, we, we, need the, we need the rules because it's all about civil rights. So it's going to happen this summer. And uh, they haven't officially announced it yet, but they have, they are cutting out the funding for that program right now. You remembered we've done it. We've already done this like three times, so I won't do it again. Leslie Stahl brought this up just on 60 Minutes two weeks ago where she reminded the Secretary of Education of the greatest lie of our generation, which she believes, which is that black students and white students are doing the same thing in schools, but white racist teachers are picking on black students, well, while letting the white students go. Fairy tale. Even so, we still are getting more and more stories just like this, this one from Milwaukee, where the schools are, where, the, where vi crime and violence in the schools are out of, out of control. Every people in Milwaukee know it, but everybody just wants to keep on giving us this fairy tale explanation of white racism and black victimization. Let's check out this story from Milwaukee because I think we're gonna start seeing a lot fewer of these pretty soon. Now at that same meeting, students hope to bring attention to what they call racial disparities in the district. Ricky Mitchell is live outside NPS headquarters with the latest, Ricky. Well, Carol, the district says it wants to hear students' suggestions about how they can fix things within the district. And this comes after an investigation by the Department of Education found that, uh, found that black students are suspended at a much higher rate than white students. These students say current discipline policies at MPS criminalize black students and create a hostile learning environment. It makes us feel like, are we here to learn or are we here to be policed? Joya Headley is a junior at the Milwaukee School of Languages, where she says there are no metal detectors or officers. But she wanted to speak up after learning about a lengthy investigation by the Department of Education's Office for Civil Rights. Findings from that show that in the 2013-2014 school year, while black students made up 55% of the district's population, they represented 80% of both suspensions and expulsions. And the money that we're spending on policing schools isn't, going, isn't actually helping the issues because obviously the issues still occur. The Department of Education and MPS reached an agreement to make changes in the school's policies, including making sure discipline is applied to all students regardless of race. And I get that MPS is trying to do that, but let us know, let, like, be open with us about this. A spokesperson for the district says they are working with students at high schools and middle schools to get feedback and that this is a long-term process in the beginning stages. The district also says it's committed to reducing the disciplinary disparity noted in the complaint. Now, the district says it's also working to set up listening sessions so that parents in the community can weigh in on this as well. Those are expected to take place next month. You know, even before Trump got elected, but after Trump got elected, that was this was my big issue. This was our big issue. And that's the one thing I just kept saying. Are these people at the Trump administration, are they going to go in there and grab these weeds and pull them out by the roots, or are they just going to trim them back on a marginal level? This, to me, if they go through with this, this looks like they're going to pull the weeds out, mostly by the roots. Though they haven't really, they haven't really seen yet the full force of all the, um, uh, of all the proponents of this, uh, 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 the people who believe criminality is the new black entitlement. They haven't been up to the full tsunami of that. So let's see what happens when that happens. Let's see if, whether they buckle under. Let's see whether they stick to their guns. 
or whether they're just going to be too afraid to make the black kids angry.